so, so the greatest piece of advice, um, well, I think the, the, I'm going to have to give you two, and I'll explain why. One is an inner piece of advice where uh, an entrepreneur has to be honest with themselves and they have to love the business they're going into. If the purpose is, yeah, I really like fashion, but you really just want to be rich, then it's a different story, right? Because after that, that love affair goes away in a week, that and you're in a factory, you know, 24 hours a day, you're not going to think about rich. You have to love what you do. I think then the you know the exterior element is very much needed, and um, it's been proven that it has worked in the past for many many people. Is you need a mentor. Uh, most entrepreneurs that are successful can attribute you to one or many mentors uh, within their their history, and that mentor shouldn't be somebody at the beginning who has an investment in your business. It should be a traditional mentor. And where they make a lot of mistakes is they try to go out, entrepreneurs try to go after these huge mentors they see on TV or things of that nature when I always say, if somebody's run a, a store or a business in your neighborhood for the last 20 years and they have not shut the door, it takes the same energy to do that as it does to run Ford or General Mills. And that person can teach you those and have those business. So those are two things. I'm a recovering entrepreneur, that's what I call myself, <laughs> because of all of the ups and downs that one has to go through. And so the, the, the challenge gets to be whether you can stay the course, because uh, there's, there's some days it's going to be really, really well, other days it's going to just be dreadful. Some days you're going to uh, make that poor decision, not that you intended to, but it might have been forced on you. Uh, and so that you're going to have to meet with challenges that you weren't prepared to meet. And you had to plan for it. There's no way you can plan for it. everything that goes on in the business operation. It, it comes to you. However, you must plan. Now, I said that, that you must plan and have some idea and knowledge of where you're going. Uh, finally, I think that Damon's very first point is the point that I stress the most. And that is, uh, if you're thinking about going into business, what is the end game that you're trying to achieve with the business? That's what people forget. If you want to be rich, that's one strategy. If you want to be famous, that's another strategy. Everything involves different strategies. We seem to think that it's all one combination or one, one thing, but it's really different things depending upon what you're trying to do. And if the business won't bring you that, then you might as well not go in that direction. Thank you. While staying up to date with the latest advances in cloud internet security, <laughs> they are secured to banking and hospital internet security standards where customers can feel safe to upload copies of their most sensitive documents from Tucker George. Please welcome Jason Warner, Steve White, and TJ Brown from your safe box. Thank you all for having us out. My name is Jason Warner. I'm the CEO and co-founder of your safe box. With me I have Steve, Steve White. Excuse me, Steve White. He's our co-founder and chief security officer. And I have Theodore Brown, who's other co-founder and chief technology officer. So, like Kenny said, we created your safe box. We created the first ever virtual safe deposit box in the cloud. We took cloud technology, like you all know, and secured it to banking and hospital security standards. So what does that mean? You can upload copies of wills, trusts, birth certificates, pictures of all your valuables in the cloud and know they're secure. You mentioned Google and you right. mentioned Dropbox and all those other things. They are doing whatever it is they do. Right. You're in some type of competition with them. Right. And they do some things that, that, that the public and their, and their customers are aware of. Now, what is it that you're going to do that's going to make the public see you that's different than what they're doing. Not just the, the what you're selling, you know, what can go in your box. What are you going to do? I think the answer to your question is actually secure. I mean, that's exactly what we are presenting to the public. We are not just restoring and file sharing and your, you know, your movies and videos and things like that. We're for sensitive, secure documents. So that's our difference. We are a security company that allows you to secure the documents in the cloud. So glad to see you again. Uh, thank you. Yeah.
Uh, this is my first time back since uh, my first day in college in Morehouse. Funny story is yep, yep. I actually tried to get him to the opera and uh, Yeah, I tried to say I was like right, you know, I was a dance studio and the dance performance, which is great. But uh, it's a great thing to think that I'm up here now because of my own. So just say, give me, give me a round of applause. It's the reason why I'm up here. Uh, I didn't believe myself and she believed in me, so that's uh, that's what family's all about, though. Food and uh, family. Uh, but yeah, we, uh, we created so large group right I was in my third stint in college, actually. I've been to three colleges in the Air Force, and my family taught me resiliency. I learned from them. Uh, they started their own businesses, entrepreneurs, and I learned through watching them. And my mom taught me something, which was when you want to learn, just do it. So I told my mom, we got together for lunch, and we always were discussing it with food, that I wanted to start a business. And what she offered to me was not only her expertise and her wisdom, but she offered me a recipe. And it was a beer recipe. Now, I've tasted this before, and I love my mom's cooking. I mean, it's incredible. But mom, like, mom cooks the best, right? And I'm 23, I don't know how to cook that well. I know mac and cheese, but that's about it. So, when she, uh, when she presented this, I was like, that's a great trend, that's a great idea. And we got together and we created Sobro. She'll show you how we make this. Sobredo is a line of arson beer that mixes, and the best part about it is it only takes one ingredient, which is a bottle of beer. Tonight we have a little light, and it takes absolutely no baking skills, which is the only great part about it. So to make it, all you're going to do is take one of our mixes, and you're just going to dump the mix into the bowl. After you do that, you're going to take your beer and just pour it over the top. Foam up, and that's the wonderful part about the beer. It's like the magic ingredient. Then you just stir it all together until all the mix is mixed into the beer. And then once that is done, what you're going to do is you're just going to put it right into your red little pan, and you're going to bake for 45 minutes in the oven. That's all you have to do. That's, that's it. Absolutely no baking skills required, and it does make a perfect loaf of bread. So I've got some samples for judges. The greatest thing too is that uh, you can use your favorite beer. So the more flavor in the beer, the more you're going to taste the bread. For me personally, I like a stout or a simple raisin. So it really allows you to kind of express yourself with the bread. You create something that uh, creates a community, but also allows you to be competitive. Today, uh, today we have. Let's see, we started our Kickstarter last year. This time we were finalizing the details. We were able to raise ten thousand Kickstarters. So thank you for that. 500% uh, is what we uh, what we asked for. We also were self-funded and we started a business all sustainable, no debt, which is great. Uh, today we are in 56 stores across 15 states in Canada, three provinces. And last week we got into Whole Foods, so we officially launched there. Yeah. Judges, we have seven that are available. They range from the classic, the honey wheat, cinnamon raisin, buffalo wing, uh, green chili cheddar, roasted garlic, and rosemary. This crew employs top tier college students to provide moving services in 121 cities across the country. For thousands of students, Bell House provides access to the nationwide fleet of moving trucks and fully integrated online management systems for small scale moving. From Chattanooga, Tennessee, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Trip Stanford, Cameron Duty, and Stephen Vallejos of Bell House. Thank you. 
until the end of the semester, the same right, the more girls that I engaged during that semester, the more phone calls I got for, hey, will you help me move me out? Basically, you're good at marketing your sexuality during the semester. You can, you can get a huge block of, you know, your labor lined up towards the end. Uh, and, you know, dads and random towns would be like, hey, who's that guy that you said was so great that you had to talk about the last six months? Um, do you think he could help you move out instead of, instead of me driving down from where I'm from? So, basically, I realized, got over my ego and realized that I wasn't the best movie hell in the entire world. It was just that people didn't have access to movie labor unless it was a full service, two minute trial, phone book, you know, moving section, and to move from this part of town to this part of town. So, in college, I remember moving all these people, making all this money towards the end of the semester, and saying, you know, Realizing that uh, you know people needed access to moving help that wasn't a full service moving company, somebody that doesn't move piano and china cabinets and, and all that good stuff. So what we did was me and a friend of mine, Cameron, who was an Alice who actually isn't here tonight, um, we we ran an ad at the school we went to and said, need moving, need help moving into the dorm, call this number. Uh, three weeks later, we had 300 customers, and we are moving in, you know, 300 people in a three-day period in one college campus. So we hired our entire, you know, ex fraternity that we were in uh, after we graduated, and said, "Hey, we need to help all these move, move these people out." So um, we did that, and, and it went over incredible. Customers were hugging us and said, "It's all the cheap and the most help we've ever got." Need, you know, the great service you have to provide. And we said, we can provide this service in every city in the country. Uh, people need access to moving help. These college kids are sitting around playing video games, drinking beer with nothing to do, and I'm moving out of my apartment, or I bought a or got a new job, or getting married, and I don't want to do it myself, but I don't want to hire a full service moving company. So, um, that's what we did. We did it in one city. We moved it to eight cities. Reviews were incredible. Reservations were, you know, hundreds of moves. And incredible service. We built a great infrastructure and technology around it. Took it to 40 cities our third year. Now we're at 120. And basically we're on demand moving hell in 120 cities in the country utilizing college students. So you need moving now, you call, you call our way, call our phone number, you go to our website, you book us. Um, if you're a college student that you've signed up to be a bell hop in your town, you get an alert on your phone, just like Lyft, you know, what Lyft did with cab drivers is what we've done for moving up. You get a text on your phone saying, do you want to go, you want to go move two weeks from now? June 14th at 3 o'clock, click it, say, I'm in, and the worst the customer says, I'm in, I'm going to help you out, let's do this, and just kind of take it.